I've got rhythm, I've got music, I've got my man, don't need no more daisies in green pastures. Ooh, I think that's all I know. I better stop there. Hello, 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 dear friend. Thank you for tuning in to an episode of Answering the Inner Call podcast. It's me, your girl, Malika Lee, back with another episode. And in this this episode, you know, I'm going to explore, you know, I'd always like to start with a song, if I can think of one, that ties into the theme. And this one is about, are you in tune with your own rhythm? So, let's go. Answering the inner call, if you if this is your first time here, welcome. Please like, comment, and subscribe so you can be sure not to miss an episode. We are all about that life of spirituality, of psychology, and looking at those in society and in the arts. So with this one, I wanted to explore as I'm trying to find my own rhythm. You know, so often after we get a certain age, we're put on, we're always put on other people's rhythms and schedules, right? Like we go to school and that's school starts at this time, be there at this time, this class, this class. And it wasn't until I remember being in college and that was a time where you can create your own schedule and there's flexibility. And I remember having some reading to do for one of my classes and it was like, I had some time, I don't remember. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning or one o'clock in the afternoon. And I remember sitting down to do some reading and I read the first line. It wasn't clicking and I read it again. It's like, huh. And I spent, I don't know, let's say 15, 20 minutes trying to do some reading. And you know, like when you're reading something and you know you're not really getting, you're reading the words, but it's like you're not getting the deeper meaning of it. So I remember putting that book aside, doing something else after basically really kind of struggling with it. And then I picked up that same book that evening, like around six o'clock or after dinner and picked up, I revisited the part that I tried to read earlier because that was like a waste of time. And so I started right there. And when I tell you, I read everything and it was just brought to life and so clear. And that was the first time I had this aha moment. And I was like, oh, I do better studying and processing things like this and reading at night. That's where, for whatever reason, just the gears are going and that's part of my rhythm. And, you know, with school and always being on somebody else's rhythm, whether it's school, whether it's a job or other commitments and obligations we have, we can lose sight of and just get disconnected from our own rhythm. And it's so interesting because rhythm is also related to sound, right? It's like that repetitive cycle of something happening over and over again, whether it's the heartbeat, whether it's the breath and the exhale and inhale of our lungs, like so much of our flow, even if you look at Chinese medicine, and they have this whole cycle and rhythm that at certain times of day, the body and the organs are heightened and or performing different things. And so from one to three, it's small intestine that's in its cycle doing its thing. And then from you know three to five, it's bladder doing its thing. And so there's so much of our life that is really a fo- on a foundation of rhythm And then there's so much of our life that is like disconnected from that rhythm. And, and so because it's on somebody else's time or somebody else's expectation. And I think that it behooves us to be connected to our rhythm as much as we can and still operate in society because it's going to be, it's like going against your rhythm is like swimming upstream. It's going to take a lot more energy and a lot more time, similar to when I was trying to study at a time that was not where my mental process, that's not, that wasn't my finest hour. That wasn't in alignment with my personal rhythm. Now I have a theory that your rhythm is, and your peak time is also correlated to your birth time. This is just my own theory. I'm curious if anybody else thinks this, like if you're a morning person and you know that about yourself, 
did you were you born also in the morning or early morning if you're a night person were you born in the evening or at night ironically as I'm telling you this and I don't know if I ever put two and two together I was born at like in the evening time <laughs> so I'm just like oh yeah that holds up for me in this experiment and I'm curious to hear what you all think but one of the things when I started paying attention and connecting back to myself right versus being outward focused and being on somebody else's pattern and schedule was I had some level of autonomy at work and I knew that early in the mornings, which was when I was required to be there, wasn't my best and finest and most productive time to be engaging with people that early. That was the best time that I could structure my day to be doing more admin work, checking emails, all those other things, kind of getting grounded and getting my mind right for the day in quiet time before I engaged and did more parts of my job that was more interactive. And so that was one way, for example, of paying attention to what my rhythms were and what allowed me to be in a state of flow versus going upstream <laughs> and going against myself, my inner, going against my inner grain. I think also, if I was to extend this, you know, there's the temptation even with this podcast you know, I had some coaching and the algorithms and the this and the that. And it's like, oh, putting out content every day or putting out content every other day and the algorithms of that and this whole thing of go, 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 go. Now, I might have a, a particular sensitivity to this also because if I think of my ancestors who were enslaved, it was like this whole thing of all the time, go, 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 right? Working from sun up to sundown, productivity. All these things, although even if you're working from sun up to sundown or, you know, if you're working long hours at work, that doesn't mean that you're productive. But my point in that is there is this temptation, right, of that there's just this one way of doing something and honoring that or being afraid of not fitting into that, even if that doesn't fit into what your personal rhythm is. And I'm saying this to say that, you know, like I said, progress first, if you heard that earlier episode as I was kind of shifting with this podcast and I'm still finding my rhythm in all of this. Like the temptation is putting out something every two days. And I'm clear that that may not be my innate rhythm. And I really want to honor that rhythm and honor you, the listener. So, you know, when there's an episode coming and there's a bit of product pre predictability, right? We have like a baseline understanding and, and building, you know, a foundation of trust. So I'm still finding my way and I'm going to experiment with that. And I want to honor and speak to, because this go, 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 is also kind of very similar to more of a masculine energy, which is a different, it's a different type of movement than the feminine energy, which is more of a circle which is also more like earth, right? Like with women, our circular rhythms are usually around, especially when we have, we start menstruation. It, it goes like, uh, it's repetitive. You know, it's, you're going through the follicular stage and you're ovulating in the luteal phase and then you're having a menstruation. It's a, it's a rhythm, it's a cycle. And back in the day, I've done some, some, I haven't done exactly studies, but I've done some reading. And I've heard some other people who have done some studies that talked about back during those times, way, 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 way back, where women saw that time of menstruation as a time of rest and stillness and retreat versus, you know, more of that linear go, 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 go. We always go up. We never go down. Like, that's not even realistic. So... I've been playing around with if this is going to be a place of honoring your rhythm of being authentic and all these things that I'm encouraging myself and you to do, then it also starts here with not trying to live into this algorithm and this expectation because I'm not a robot and being true to the rhythm that is in me. So what I'm going to start with is doing two to three episodes for the first three weeks of the month, except this one, of course, because uh, enjoying the holiday and vacation. And then 
having that last week just of stillness, of integration, of, of silence, of reflection. And that can also be true for you. Maybe there's an episode you miss. You can have a chance to go back to that or re-listen to something and then cycling it up to start it again the next month. So that's, that's what I'm toying around with for now. That's what I'm going to experiment with. And if nothing else, I hope that from this episode that you've gotten the encouragement to really pay attention and study yourself and what feels honoring and turning inward and being a and being more connected, right, than always being outward facing, which we generally are socialized to do at some point, and being on somebody else's calendar expectations, because it doesn't just tie into the rhythm, but it also ties into some of those other quote unquote rules or expectations that other people think are good for us, but we have to determine and discern what is best for us. So this is just one small way to start tapping into our own energy is tuning into that rhythm. So signing off for now, please, if you heard something that resonated with you, if you don't mind liking, comment, subscribing, sharing, and if there's some reflection or aha, I would love to hear that in the review as well. And until the next time, much love, many blessings.